up. The Holy Spirit doesn't feel a person who has not believed. So you should never ever convince yourself that you are a believer if, if in any time of your life you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your Savior. Acts of Apostles, chapter number one, the former account I made, all Theophilus of, yes, verse number two, until the day in which he was taken up after his, verse number four, with a loud voice, and being assembled together, yes, Verse number five, and John. Verse number six, therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Verse number seven, and he said to them, it is not for you to know times or season which the Father has put in his own authority. Verse number eight. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Verse, verse number eight. We can read it again, church. Shall we go? But you shall receive power Chapter number one, Jesus Christ is trying to project into their lives about the coming of the Holy Spirit. But uh, it is shocking to know as Jesus was about to leave, going, and he's talking about the one to leave behind, the mind of his listeners was very far. They wanted to know how the kingdom is going to be restored back to the Israelites. Now this kingdom is still the kingdom of God. They were talking about the rulership here on earth. Are these Romans now going? Uh, what are you doing with these Romans as far as leadership is concerned? Jesus is saying, you have no any reason to know about that. Then he brushed off that 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 discussion he says in verse number eight but you listen to this you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you so this power doesn't come before he comes this power is as a result of his presence in somebody who has received him so holy spirit is a person so as we continue this series we'll be able to know more about him but today let's lay the foundation so holy spirit is a person it's not a wind it's not a thing he's a person is the third person in the Holy Trinity of God. The Holy Trinity of God comprises of three people. Everybody say three. This is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Shall we say it together? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I cannot hear you. I know you can do better than that. What, what does, what, what does, uh, what, uh, what does the Holy Trinity of God comprises? God, yes, yes, one as if you a son. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Acts chapter number 19, Paul is coming to Ephesus. Give us that scripture. Yes, shall we read? And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. Now watch this. Jesus is already gone. He has already spoken in chapter, uh, chapter number one, preparing the disciples and those who believe. In total, there were 120. This comprised of women and men. I repeat again, this was a constitution of men 
and women, all of them were commanded not to leave Jerusalem. Everybody say location. That is the placement. Don't leave Jerusalem. So this is where you are, but don't leave. Don't go anywhere. Don't do anything. Remain there. In verse number 8, it says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. But in John chapter number 14, all of us, the readers of the Bible who are seated here, you will agree with me. Jesus had already spoken about the coming of the promise of the Father. And this, the coming of the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. Now he comes and says, in verse number 8 uh, Acts chapter number 1 he says now this Holy Spirit when he comes upon you the evidence the evidence that is in you you feel it, you see it it will be the power you will be operating in or under and then you speak in tongues as the sign and that one is done in chapter number 2 of the book of Acts are we together church and now Paul in his missionary journey and ministry he comes through an upper region. I cannot remember this upper region is which, 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 which towns and cities. But he said, the Bible says Apollos, his counterpart was in Corinth teaching the word. And Corinth enjoyed so much Apollos because them being philosophers, they wanted somebody who was reasoning and eloquent in his speech. Eloquent in speech until they came to a place where uh, they say we belong to Apollos, we don't belong to any other person. But now uh, Paul is coming to Ephesus, that is in verse number one, verse number two. Now Paul is in Ephesus and when he came to Ephesus, he found some disciples of Jesus Christ. Everybody say disciples. I cannot hear your voice, everybody. You need to be excited, say disciples. Now, there were disciples of Jesus Christ in Ephesus. These disciples of Jesus Christ, these were people who followed Christ. They followed after the teaching of Christ. Now, listen to this. These disciples were not necessarily among the 12 disciples. But whosoever follows the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, that person becomes the disciple of Jesus Christ. Do you want to know Christ? Do you want to receive Christ? Do you want to know what he taught and how he directed people? Don't give, don't give or don't leave the Bible away from your life. Keep the scriptures closer to your heart. You'll be able to know Christ through the scriptures. You'll be able to hear his voice through the scripture. His will and his plan. Whosoever receives the teaching of Christ and then begin to follow that teaching, becoming the student of the word of God, that person is a disciple of Jesus Christ. I repeat again. Whosoever sits under the teaching of Jesus Christ, you read the Bible. You walk according to the, to the revelation receive from the Bible. Anybody reading the Bible and you want to learn more about Jesus Christ in the Bible, following his footsteps, doing what he commanded, doing what he has said into your life. Listen to this. You are the disciple of Jesus Christ. If another chapter was written that Paul is visiting us and he comes here in Utawala, it will be said of us that he found the disciple of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, the church in the 21st century of which it is you and me, we have a dislike of the word of God. We don't want to give attention to it. We don't want to invest in the word of God. Our time is full of other programs except the word of God. And therefore our discipleship towards Christ is questionable because even some of us we do not know him some of us we do not know what he said some of us we don't believe in that which he said may God help the church today I say may God help you again this is our language somebody say amen he found disciples these are people who believed in him these are the people who followed his teaching and my question is this to us do you follow his teaching are you the disciple of Jesus Christ because some of us, we join a congregation minus joining Christ. We follow a pastor, but we don't follow Christ. And you want to know, Dr. Makoha, that people are followers, but Christ. They are followers of other things in what we call churches. You wait until the pastor backslides, then we know Christ was never in their lives. Some of them will drop salvation the same day. 
You hear people saying, this is our church. Until Christ has come in this church, then you know who belongs here. You are not a member here until I see this church in the crisis. That's when I know who is a true member here. I will listen to your language, Asunta, and I will I watch your movement and read your language, your body language. I will put my ear closer to where you are talking with your fellow believers. Then I will know whether you are a member of this church or not. Verse number two, shall we read church? Verse number two. Verse number two, give us that verse number two. Amen. Shall we read? He said to them, this is Paul saying to those, uh, to those uh, disciples in uh, Ephesus. Uh, did you, shall we go? Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now listen to this question, but look at me. He's asking, did, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So number one, it was the believing factor which needed to be considered. After you believed, when you believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Every watch, you will just watch this. Believing number one, it is believing in Christ Jesus. And then you get the salvation. You don't, you don't become a saved believer without believing. You must believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is a power unto salvation. You must believe that Christ came and died for you and for me. So that we may have everlasting life. You must believe the scripture. For God so loved the world. John 3, 16. That he gave his begotten son. That whosoever shall believe in him shall not uh, perish. He gave his begotten son. is the subject. But believing. Whosoever believes. So not perishing. Not perishing. And not receiving. And receiving the the eternal life come after believing are you a believer what are you believing are you a believer what are you believing did, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe why, why, why is he asking Reverend Tom, why is he asking that uh, when you believe did you receive the Holy Spirit number one you don't you, you, you are not saved if it is not the work of the Holy Spirit. In other words, salvation is the work of the Holy Spirit. And therefore the Holy Spirit of the Father who comes as a promise, when you are saved, he is at work. Now what you need to experience because he's together with you, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So people enjoy so much when they give their life to Jesus Christ, but when you speak about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, they begin to fear. Now, and this is as a result of all gimmicks people have watched. Some think when one is spirit filled, he must shake until everything goes down. I don't want to be like that one. That is not the Holy Spirit. That's manifestation. And people, people respond differently. People respond differently. Na kuna mwingine, roo mtakatifu anakuja na kutakuna pepo. Anapamba na nalo ndani. Kwa sababu ya atmosphere inye uko, uko, ama the sphere where we are, the power of God is so immense in that service. And the Holy Spirit decides to come into your life because of your desire. But any demonic operation must be shaken off. So you need to discern because most of us, we don't want to discern. You need to discern where is the Holy Spirit and where is the work of the enemy. Some of them, it is not the Holy Spirit. It is power encounter. The power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the enemy. They meet. And this person begins to shake. And immediately the power of the enemy is defeated. Of course, that is the end result. Then this person begins to speak in tongues. Now, some of us, for lack of discernment, we do not know. When did the Holy Spirit won the battle and take over this life? And when was this demonic powers struggling with the power of the Holy Spirit? So he is asking them, I know you believed, but when you believed, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Let's continue that scripture, that verse number two. Shall we read church? Thank you. So they say to him with a loud voice, we have not so much as hard whether there is the Holy Spirit. Shall we read it again with a loud voice? Let me hear you. Apana, let's read it together with a loud voice. So they say to him with a loud voice, We have no 
not so much heard about this Holy Spirit. And there could be so many other people here. You have heard so much about prosperity, heard so much about others, have just finished and concluded and put a comma to the teaching about how believers destroy the church. We know devil number one, then believers sometimes, they are number two, destroying their own church. You have heard that one enough. And so many other teachings from this altar and from somewhere else. But the Holy Spirit, there could be one seated here in this congregation, you say, and you agree with the Ephesians, that this has not been taught so much. And that's why I'm coming back to this. We shall work together so that you can respond and say, yes, I've been filled by the Holy Spirit. Why? I've heard about him so much and so many times. I have an experience with him. One of the things you need to understand, anytime you talk about the Holy Spirit, he comes. Ah. Uh, anytime you teach about the Holy Spirit, he comes. And that's why I pray during this series, your spirit shall be alert. I say again, you should be saying amen. Uh, your spirit must be alert to receive and correspond with the word about the spirit of God. And I pray it will, it will not be an amazing thing or a surprise to us this is the Pentecostal church as we teach this teaching that the power of God shall fall upon some people here in this church and they shall begin to speak in tongues with the, as an evidence of the power of God resting and operating in your life. You must agree with that by saying amen. The Holy Spirit is not a new episode in the church but it's a continuation of the work of God in the life of a believer verse number three shall we go verse number three let's read and he said to them into what then were you baptized so they said into John's baptist uh, ba ba baptism verse number four verse number four then Paul said John indeed baptized with the baptism of, some of you are not reading, saying to the people that they should believe on him, that is God, mark that H, him, that is God or Jesus, who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. He was very clear. Jesus is explaining. The baptism of John the Baptist, the ba Baptist, was the baptism unto salvation. Those who gave or believed, they were baptized into Christ. Into Christ. Now you don't, you don't become a Christian, don't become a believer without being baptized into Christ. Salvation is a baptism into Christ. But it is the work of the Holy Spirit. How baptism into Christ? You must believe Christ Jesus. Lazimo Mwamini. Now, there is no any other way apart from him. So you don't say, I am born again, yet you are fighting with Christ. He came for you and for me. You must believe that his death Jesus Christ's death was for you and for me. And it led us into a place of enjoying the salvation. The price is paid by who? By Christ. And therefore, there is no salvation without Christ. So there are people who are running with the doctrine, Jesus only. Or God only. There are people who say, may I believe in God but not Jesus. Then you are not saved. There is no any other way. We are saved through Christ Jesus. You don't get salvation in a different way. Hakuna njia nyingine. Salvation haiji kwa wewe kujoin kanisa zuri. Salvation haiji kwa wewe kufanywa kiongozi kanisani. In fact, baadhi ya viongozi tunao makanisani ni watu tuliteua without discernment. We were too fast to have this person as a leader. Lakini crisis inapotokea unasikia anataka kupigana. Unajua tu hapa iko shida. Akujaiva mambo ni mangapi? Mungu baba, Mungu mwana na Roho mtakatifu. Unajua tu avijaiva. Me I, I will know I will, I will know that you're not saved kutokana na maisha yako tu. Maisha ya Mkristo yanaonekana. 
Ai, hakuna discussion. Kwa matendo. Na kama mwenye huo ni matendo yako, saa zingine wasikilize watu. Nilikwambia story ya kusema I don't care tuliubiliga hiyo injili. Ah, uh, Reverend Tom, tuliubiliga hiyo injili. I don't care what people say about me. I don't care what they conclude about me. What, what I mind is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Wewe unalewa na utaki watu waseme hata unasema una mind Christ Jesus. Urongo uja ukoka. You became a member of a given congregation but you're not a believer. Umeingia you were considering the church of Jesus Christ as a chama. That's why your behavior here is equal to the chama. Tunashindwa ni mtu anamna gani? Hapa usemi kweli na kule nje usemi kweli. You did not follow the right route. Paul is explaining to the Ephesians that was the, 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 the baptism unto salvation and that is through Christ Jesus through Christ Jesus so there's no any other way Jesus himself while on earth here he, before people and for, before a big congregation he say I am the way I am the truth and I am the life that is what he said he said if you want to see my father see me if you want to see my father see me nobody comes to my father without me you must be baptized in Christ Jesus it is through Christ Jesus if, if I may explain father that salvation is possible salvation is only possible through Christ Jesus you believe in him that is the starting point now the Holy Spirit doesn't settle doesn't come upon uh, it doesn't feel the Holy Spirit doesn't feel a person who has not believed so you should never ever convince yourself that you are a believer if if in any time of your life, you've never confessed Jesus Christ as your savior. You should never. Don't respond to the infilling of the Holy Spirit because you will not come upon you. We shall see the prerequisites of one to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Some of these conditions are some of the things you overlook. You become abusive. You are not truthful. You cannot be trusted. You are dishonest in your dealings. The Holy Spirit doesn't work with those kind of people. And that's where the power of the church is never felt. A big number, but the Holy Spirit is all there. Am I teaching, helping someone here? So we are talking about the Holy Spirit. So he's asking them. And there could be people even in our service here. Give us that scripture. Who have never received the Holy Spirit because they have not heard about him. Let's read, let's, let's read again. Uh, saying to the people. Saying to the people. With a loud voice. What did, he, what did Paul say? Saying to the people that they should believe on him. Who would come up. Uh -huh, that is on Christ Jesus. So whom should we believe? Christ Jesus. Let me hear you. Whom should we believe? So where are we starting? Where is the starting point? Christ Jesus. He is the way. He is the Savior. And nobody comes to the Father but through him. You must be baptized through Christ. So salvation is a baptism through Christ. So he says Paul is quoting, is quoting John the Baptist. He said what he was preaching and his baptism, it was a preparation of the souls of people to meet with Christ in salvation. So the subject here is not even baptism. The subject here is Christ himself, who is the Savior. Can somebody say amen? I say, can somebody say amen? You can give us the next scripture. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. Aha. Uh -huh. Verse number six. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongue and prophesied. Now watch this. This is Paul now. He has explained to them. When you believed, were you filled with the Holy Spirit? No. Now let me come here. Let me explain something here. Every believer... Every person, let me say, every person has a measure of the Holy Spirit. In other words, some are at Levi. Holy Ghost, you go to Hapo Karibu, Kwam Levi. You go to Hapo. That's why, to me, I'm to Akiwam Levi. 
anakuja anaokoka katika ulevi na anadumisha wewe unafikiri ni kazi gani he's out of this he's out of himself um, hata akiingia aliingia akipiga kelele amenoma kwa mtu basta kama kuna walevi wangu kama watatu wanne hivi wanakujaga wakati tunaruka mwaka the reason is why a drunkard person may believe in Christ Jesus and go ahead with the salvation is because salvation is the work of the holy spirit is not man number two, it's not about your condition it is the presence of the holy spirit in your life so he's the one who brings conviction so we shall look at that later on the one one of the work of the holy spirit jesus says in chapter number 14 of the book of john is that he brings conviction he brings conviction so when you see a person standing from the seat it's not about a powerful preacher it is the holy spirit at work electina even as i teach you right now the holy spirit is at work the reason why there could be a person who was backslidden but doesn't respond to the call and to salvation because he is fighting with the holy spirit but the holy spirit like the holy spirit like 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 a wi-fi which is distributed in a given area uh, it he can only work work with someone who has the password and what is this password the password is believing in christ jesus the moment you say yes i believe that is a savior yes i believe i am a sinner yes i believe there's no other way now i want to give my love to jesus christ the holy spirit catches over with your life and leading you into a place of salvation that's when a person say i am a sinner and that person begins the journey and continues that journey and that's where most of us we are and we shall finish this journey why it is not by power it is not by might but it is by the holy spirit of god is there are there believers in this house who can say amen i said there are believers who can say amen here so it is the Holy Spirit. And when Paul had laid his hands, Paulo akanyosha mkono wake akawekelea vichwani. Alipowekelea vichwani wale watu wakaokoka, wakamina kuokoka. And wale watu wakampokea Roho Mtakatifu. Sorry, tayari walikuwa wameshaamini. Wakampokea Roho Mtakatifu. And the Bible say they spoke in tongues. Now, this tongue which is which is said here, which is said here. Number 1, this could be the tongue which is the sign that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. It could be uh, equal to the one in chapter number two when the Spirit of God came. Because when he laid his hand, they spoke in tongues and prophesied. But again, everybody watch this. This one could be, it is not the tongue which is the sign. This could be the gift of tongue. Because the gift of tongue, one speaks greater things of God and then an interpreter says what God is saying. Bring the language which can be understood by everybody. That gift, we shall look at it, that gift can be upon someone here. As we pray, sometimes in very rare cases, God is saying something through his servant and people cannot catch it. Then God uses one with that gift. He stands or she stands on the other corner and stand and say, speak it. And when they speak, operating that gift of tongue, you can sense, those who are spiritually alert, can sense this is not a person edifying himself. This is a person speaking, or it is God speaking through tongue, using this gift of tongue to the church. And that person who sit down will not cause any confusion. Will sit down. All you speak, you speak, you speak like 10 seconds or 20 seconds and then you keep quiet. And it takes a sensitive, a spiritually sensitive leader of the service or the pastor or any person in charge of that service to discern that that is God speaking to the church. And if there's anybody with a gift of interpretation of tongues, because that is another gift, We'll begin and say, Na kuja seme, mungu anasema. If it is God saying, and I interpret exactly. I, God, saying to my church, do not go down to Egypt. Remain in Gera. God can speak anything. He doesn't come and say, eh, Mungu anasema kupitia yule. No, 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 no. 
those gifts work together. And if we do not have that gift of interpretation in the church, then that person must have that ability by the help of the Holy Spirit to interpret. Now listen to this. Just in case he cannot interpret, then that one is not meant for the church. It could be about the church, but if it was explained, someone may not be able to handle it. Because not everything God speaks about the church is for the church. Those of you who walk and listen to God speaking, don't be in a hurry to say what God has said to the church. Because some of these things are dangerous. For example, you come to Sister X and you say, God has told me that you will die in three months' time. Do you think you are helping that sister? My sister, Hiyo Mbili zikazunguka nyuma yangu na hii moja ikakuja mbele nilipo iangalie nikaona inafanana na wewe. Unafikiria kila mtu anaweza handle hiyo? Msinipunguze msinifukuzie washirika bwana. Vitu vingine pambana nayo. Hiyo vitu ya manyoka nyoka ni ya kwako mwenyewe. Ni kuangalia sinema ya Anaconda series 1 paka 4 of your ovyo na una uwezo wa ku handle. Wengine hata si roho na sio shetani. Mile vitu unasoma, maeneo unaenda. Wengine mko hapa mnatoka kwa waganga. Na kwa mganga ulikuta amefuga linyoka pale lichatu. Lilipo kuona, ukambiwa lala chini. Likapita kwenye tumbo lako, likapita huku na kule. Ndiyo maana, roa mtakatifu zifanya kazi na wewe. Tabia za namna yu, umebeba hirizi. Kwenye wale yako kuna mfupa wapanya. Etu liambiwa huu mfupa unaongeza pesa. Tangu uweke huu mfupa, unashida, unamadeni. Unamadeni mpaka ya sausage. Kwa mtabu, sasa hivu mbadilisha njia. Si tunajua unaishi huku, lakini ibada ikisha unaenda hivu. Wezi ngojia wa shirika wenza kwa sabu na madeni yao. Na sima jamani tutustoke, tuseme benediction, we unatoka kama mtu anenda ajandogo. Kumi unatoroka. Tabia za namna hii. Zilefanya ruo mtakatifu na sifanyi kazi na niyako. And listen to me, sometimes tongue can be learned or can be copied the way I can speak kikuyu and I'm not a kikuyu. Mwadha ni jesu arogo chokono. I'm not a kikuyu. Otire retua kikuyo ine mwodo ye tagwa kukonyo. A kikuyo me tagwa u? Kikonyo. Mimi na hitwa, mimi na hitwa kukonyo. Tunailuwa na watu mungu. Na mimi si mkikuyu, lakina unge kikuyu. Na hindi osilani litumia kunye nyekeza kasi chana kamoja kama umamu. Weka dani ya boxe. Kasi madogo, neke, nikambia ina. Mina ito koko. So, wea si maumawa. Luka inaeza ikaigua. Luka unezo kajifunza. Waimbaju wetu walutimbisha kapata ki South Africa. Na wajawai kufika airport. Do not so much be fooled by how one is speaking tongues. It can be copied. That's why witches chant. You can be familiar with those things. Baba! 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 They chant. They chant. Ni luga. Ata shetani anayake. Mani tulelona baka hapo. So, this tongue and prophesy could be the gift of tongue came upon them and they spoke great things of God towards the future to the church by prophecy.
But again, I've told you, it could be the tongue which is a sign that the Holy Spirit has come upon them. But again, the gift of prophecy came upon them. Can somebody say amen? I say, can somebody say amen? Now we shall come to those giftings and all that. But they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They knew nothing about the Holy Spirit, but when he laid his hand upon them, the Holy Spirit manifested himself. Anytime you talk about the Holy Spirit, he manifests. So anytime you come into these services, you come into this, uh, ready to learn this series, be honest open to the Holy Spirit. There can be a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, I said this. There is a certain measure of the Holy Spirit which is in everybody, even those who don't believe. But what happens right here in verse number 6, and what happened in chapter number 2 of the book of Acts, that was the in feeling. The infinite. Rome takatif anamiminwa. Anakuja anaja dariyako. And the sign that you have received the Holy Spirit there and there, you speak in new tongues. Now, in deliverance church, we believe the infilling of the Holy Spirit with the sign of speaking tongues. We believe in that. That's why there's a place in our worship we say, everybody raise your voice, speak in tongues in this worship. It is part of us. Oh, hallelujah. And you cannot raise that, that tongue if you are not spirit-filled. It is a sign. But the impact of the Holy Spirit in your life is the power. I say again, it is the power. I cannot hear you. Somebody say, it is the power. So verse number eight, the Bible says, For you shall receive what? Power when the Holy Spirit comes on you or come upon you. Let's read together that part of the verse. Shall we go? But Thank you so much. We can repeat it again. Shall we go in chorus? But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, number one, this verse has been, I've divided it into two or three sections. You shall receive. There is a giving. So when we are talking of Pentecost, there is a giving. There is a, there is, there, there, there's the pouring. There is one giving and there is another one receiving. Pentecost is a time of receiving because there is an outpouring. So if you are ready, you are not ready to receive, then it cannot be poured into your life. Is it the book of Joel chapter number 2, verse number 28? Joel 2, 28. In the last days, for I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Now listen to me. All flesh. Can somebody touch yourself? Touch yourself. I told you we are learning. Have you touched your neighbor? Did you touch your neighbor a little bit? Does your neighbor have flesh? Yes. Now listen to me. That Holy Spirit is for you. That uh, you must say amen. That Holy Spirit is for your neighbor. Anybody with the flesh, once you believe, the Holy Spirit must come upon you. Now, if you are seated in such a service in a Pentecostal congregation and the Holy Spirit has not come upon you, you should not be guilty. It is nothing to do with the case, but you are a candidate of the Holy Spirit. He is gentle and is getting ready to come upon you alive. And he can come upon you alive any time as long as you are ready to receive him. And your readiness to receive him, it all depends whether you are working it out in your life. Anything which is a sign of sin, anything from the enemy, anything which is not of God, anything which is wickedness, and anything which does not please God. Once you work it out of your life, you are ready to receive. And in this church, the Holy Spirit shall become your companion. The Holy Spirit shall become your helper. The Holy Spirit shall help in your life. You shall not be alone. I say you shall not be alone. I say again, you shall not be alone. Jesus said, I am not leaving you as orphan, but the, the promise of the Father shall come upon you. Who is this the promise of the Father? It is God, the Holy Spirit. He himself is God. Can somebody say amen? He's a person through whom God accepts to dwell in our life. 
He's the person through whom the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life guarantees that Jesus Christ and then God himself have made your life or your body the dwelling place. Have you ever read this scripture that don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? He's already there. He is God. Can somebody say amen? I say again, somebody say amen. We shall come to that later on. He is God. So number one, believe. Once you, when you believe, then nothing. No, you are waiting for nothing. Waiting for nothing but the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, you don't beg him. You don't beg him. He is available. I say again, he is available. You don't plant any seed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. He is available. He is free. After you believe, lazima ukeshe. He is available. Kukesha ni kuzuri, but he is available. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, he is available here. As somebody say, he is here. I say again, he is here. He's next to where you are. He's waiting for you to open up. And sometimes those who are filled already, sometimes when they sit down, they can't be refilled again. Why? Because we are leaking. The worries of the world and what you go through sometimes is metobwa mashimo katika maisha yako na inafanya uyo roho mtakatifu asiweze kukaa hapo ndani. Mtu litukana. The Holy Spirit doesn't strive with you when you decide because he leaves you to operate with your will. Willingly you allow him in. But again, the things when you do, it goes out. It doesn't struggle with you. It doesn't strive with you. We shall see that in our teaching. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. So this Holy Spirit, he comes. When he comes, you shall receive power. There is a place of provision there. There is a place of giving and you receiving. There is a giving and receiving. One who is a giver, another one is receiving. The Holy Spirit does it. So there has to be that. Now, as you desire the Holy Spirit, you need to understand you are not the giver. You are the recipient. Believers are the recipient. So you don't struggle. Second, how ready are you supposed to be when he comes? You just need to be open to him. And allow him to come into your life. Can somebody say amen? I say again, can somebody say amen? This Holy Spirit, when he comes, is poured into your life. And when he's poured into your life, you receive him. He say, you shall receive power. Everybody say power. I cannot hear you. You can say again, power. Uh, you can say the third time because everything is a three in Kenya right now. The third time, shall we say Power. Can somebody say amen? This power, number one, it is in twofold. Number one is, is authority. Is authority. You receive power, and that with that power, you'll have authority over demonic powers. Remember, this is the kingdom. Did the Paul write and say, For we have not received, uh, we have not received the the, 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 sh the shakeable kingdom, the kingdom which is shaking, but we have received the unshakable kingdom. And not only that, Paul is also saying that for we have received the kingdom of power and sound mind. Can somebody say amen? Yani in this kingdom, all of us, we sound well mentally. You don't say I've been filled by the Holy Spirit and then you look, begin to look weird. You know, Confano Sasahivi, Napo Fundisha, Alafu Moja went to Rome to Katifa Kamishkia, boom. Akanza ku kuongea. In the beginning, the first, the first like 20, 30, 40 seconds, we will be discerning. Takotuna scan, ni rohogani kopondani. Alafu, all of us who connect with you. Once we know it is the spirit of God, but you've been overwhelmed, and I must finish this teaching, from where I stand and others are seated, we can scan and discern and know 
There is nothing God is saying to us, but you are building yourself. You've been overwhelmed and you cannot control yourself. Then one of us who is spiritually alert will come, will come and lay his hand on you. When the hand of another believer is laid on you, if your spirit is truly the spirit of God, you will begin to slow down. But in the event, Potters, you see somebody coming to lay his hand on this person who's speaking in tongues. And then that person is like, and they have spiritual discipline. We don't refuse the fact that sometimes we are overwhelmed. We have worshipped. We've gone into prayers. The power of God has come in a bigger way upon the church. And people begin to do business with the Holy Spirit and God himself. And some of us, not in equal measure, but according to your preparation and desire, he pours himself into your life. Some of us are overwhelmed, but listen to me, he's a God of order. I second he's a God of order. Yeah.